Okay, so test review here. We're only looking at A and C for the test. Okay, there are a few shortcuts you could use for either one of these, but I'm just gonna go right to what you guys know. And if you wanna learn the shortcut, you can talk to me after this. And I've already taught you some of the shortcut here. So for A, I would just go right to your standard area model. Put your x squared in the lower left, your negative 30 in upper right. Multiply those together, you get negative 30 x squared. Top of your diamond problem, what goes at the bottom of the diamond problem? X. X. That comes from right here. So now, so the two numbers that multiply to negative 30 would be a negative or a 6x and a negative 5x. Multiply to negative 30x squared. Add to x. Put those there. Now we know that two things that multiply to x squared are x times x. x times negative 5 gives me a negative 5x. x times 6 gives me 6x. So my final factoring x plus 6 times x minus 5. Questions there? Jake? Is that Yes. Yes. Oh. All right, C. Same exact thing. Same exact thing. So, so there has to be a plot. When you do these, make sure you show all the work. Show all of these steps. It helps me give you partial credit. It also helps me see where you are in understanding. So what's going to go at the top of this diamond problem? Has to be 8x squared. 8x squared. The bottom of the diamond problem? Has to be 5x. My diamond is definitely crooked. Okay, so in what numbers, what two things multiply to 8x squared but add to negative 5x squared? Nothing. I mean, I think that's the right answer. Let's just double check here. If I go eight here, one times eight gives me eight. Those don't add a negative five in any way. And two times four gives me eight. And those can't multiply or add to negative five X in any way. So. Three times 2.7. Yeah, maybe we could use decimals, but that's still not factorable. Please do not mistake not factorable for non-solvable or no solution. If we had an equation that had something like this, so the same exact trinomial equals zero, that doesn't mean you can't solve that. It means we can't solve it by factoring. We could solve that by doing the quadratic formula or graphing or completing the squares. There's a lot of ways you can solve it. Will you do that? Okay. Uh, we actually will get to that. Just not on this problem. Okay, here's your new 108. All right, Ricky wants to build a rectangular pen. You don't need to write this whole question down. I would write down these components. Rectangular pen. Using the bar on his one side. That is really a squiggly line. And 200 feet of fencing. Largest area. So we did this a couple days ago. Go ahead and draw the picture here. Do some orange. So we have a barn. So A here is to draw a diagram. So here's your barn. With the fence, using the barn as one side. So there's your fence. Okay, and it says to use x as the width. So the width, I'm gonna assume is this, call that x. Now if this is x, what is this gonna be over here? X. x. A tough question is what can I call, or what would my expression be for this length then? You have a two x, okay, I agree with that so far. What else has it gotta be in there? 
There's got to be a 200 in there. Let's just do this. If I had this as, say, 20, this would also be 20. What would this be? 160. Because you'd have, how'd you get 160? You subtract two 20s from what? From 200. So this expression, you start with 200. And what are you going to subtract? 40, which is, in terms of x, get rid of the 20s now. In terms of x, what is that? Not x squared. 2x. I put 20 there just so you can kind of, because sometimes with you guys, it's hard for a lot of people. It's really hard to understand when you have X's, what to do. When you plug numbers in, it's easier to figure out. Oh, you just take 20s and add them together and subtract it from 200. You do that in your head. With X's, you have a hard time doing that. So what I put, do is put numbers in there. Because all you're going to do with these is you're going to take the two X's, you're going to add them together. And that gives you 2X. You subtract that from 200 to get that length. Now we want an equation in terms of x for the area. So, area equals, and the area of a rectangle is what? How do you find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. So we have the width is x, and our length is 200 minus 2x. Okay, well, what we're going to do after this, we're going to use a calculator. Find the maximum area. First, if I graph this, Zoe, question? Um, where did you look all the homework? Well, this problem was not in the homework, so yeah, you need to write this problem down. Okay, so if I graph this, and when I say graph it, you can't graph it with the A, but you can go Y equals X times 200 minus 2X. What kind of shape would you get? I see, I say, Sam, what is that called? Parabola. So you're going to get a parabola. And you're going to get an upside down parabola. Okay? And at the top of that parabola would be your maximum area. So let's graph that in a calculator here. I'll take that off the side there. Bring this in. Oh, I already have it in there. So I graphed it there. X times 200 minus 2X. The toughest thing is going to be setting your window because most of your calculators will look like that when you push. It'll be a zoom standard and you won't be able to see anything. Now you could do zoom fit, which is zero. And you might get, but then you, then you can't see the whole parabola. So I think it's just better off just to kind of think about what your window should be. I go to my window, my X is my side length here. And my side length here, it can't be less than zero. So my X min is, I put zero. Max would be 250 maybe? Well, X is how much fencing is it? I mean, this is how long this side is. So it's really how much fencing are you looking at? What's the longest X could be if we made if we put the fence, attach it to the barn, strung out the fence, and then went back to the barn, how long would X be? 100. Yeah, you have 200, but you got to get back to the barn. So it would be 100 is the biggest you can even connect that fence at all. And then your scale here is how many tick marks do you want? If I put a 1, this tends to, from, we're going from 0 to 100, there'd be 100 little tick marks. So I'm going to put a tick mark every 10. Now your y min, this is the harder side. The y min is the area. Y is the area. So y min is the smallest area would be zero. I don't know the biggest area. Throw a number out there, big number. 3,000. 3,000. I'm going to go by like a hundreds then, a graph. So you can see that 3,000, we get a parabola, but we still can't see the top of it. 
So let's make that number bigger. 7,000. 7,000. 7,000. That's better. I can see the top of it now. Now, what I would do, you guys like to do the trace. It looks like the top right there is 50 comma 5,000. We got lucky when I pushed trace. What I do a lot of times is I just go, okay, I figure out about where that top should be. It's around 50. And then I go to my table. And if I scroll, which I already did, if I scroll all the way down to 50, just see what you, I'm not sure if you can see that. It's pretty small. You'll be able to see it better on the video. But 50, it's at 5,000. And you can see it goes up to 5,000. 4,982, 4,992, 4,998, 5,000. And then back down to 4,998. That tells you that the turnaround is definitely at 5,000. You could also go second calc, use maximum here. This will do it for sure. You go left at the highest point, push enter. Right at the highest point, enter. And then you guess about where the highest point is, push enter. And then it actually gives you maximum. There it is, 50 comma 5,000. So 50 comma 5,000 was the maximum, but the question is, what's the maximum area? Which of those two numbers is the area? The 5,000, so C, 5,000 square feet. Now D says, write the dimensions for the maximum area. So we want the actual dimensions here of the bar, or sorry, of the uh, fenced area. So this 50 is the width. So what's the length then? 100. If this is 50, that'd be 50. And then you could just do 200 minus 50 and 50, which is 100. So it would be 100. So 50 feet by 100 feet. And there's your dimensions. That is the whole question. It might ask you to graph it. If you graph it, you're just sketching a graph. You could just use quadrant one here. Make sure you label the y and the x-axis, the origin, something like that. The maximum here was 50 comma 5,000. The 5,000 is the area. So that, that, they, they asked you for that on C, find the maximum area. So that's the 5,000. And the 50 is the dimension. Okay, let's go to a little easier one, I think, for you guys, especially because we did a lot of this. Use your knowledge of special right triangles to determine the missing side lengths and angles. So let's zoom in here. So we have our 45, 45, 90. And we have our 30, 60, 90. Let's start with A here. If that's two, what's that? Two. These have to be equal. And then what's the hypotenuse? Two square root two. Two square root two. Done. Okay. When it's an isosceles right triangle or a 45, 45, since these two are equal, it's root two. Now we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. We have the short side is four. The long side is always double or eight. So what's this side? Four square root three. Why? Because that's our shortcut for 30, 60, 90 we've been working on for a long time. Well, the shortcut's just to remember that it's always a short side times root three. And what's this angle going to be right here? 60. 60 degrees. You could use Pythagorean theorem, really. You could do 4 squared plus x squared equals 8 squared. And you would get 4 squared root 3. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have this is a 60 and 90. So what's this angle right here? 30. They gave us the hypotenuse of this 30, 60, 90. So what's the short side? 3. 
That's six. Half of that's three. And it's three square root three. Squeeze three square root three. That's it. Questions there? All right, last one we're doing today. 6-1, Ted. Use what you know about Pythagorean triples to determine the length. Now, Pythagorean triples, it gives you a little hint here. We could just use Pythagorean theorem. We could do, which we won't, but I could do 12 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. Like That'll work. But the hint is Pythagorean triples, which means what? What do, what do I know about all these numbers here? They're all going to be whole numbers, exactly. So if they're all whole numbers, we have a couple short cut triples. Does anybody remember a really basic triple? Yep, three, four, five. Three, four, five. And there's one more that comes up a lot. And it starts with a five. Five, 12, 13. Write those two down. Five, 12, 13, three, four, five. Three, four, five comes up a lot. Five, 12, 13 comes up usually the second most. Okay? So now we look at these triangles and we try to figure out if they are multiples of either of these. So like this one, 12 and 15, 15 are they multiples of either of these? So 12 is a multiple of three, but 15 is not a multiple of four. What about, it has to be a multiple of two of those. So which two of these, or on well, these two, like obviously 15 is not a multiple of 13 or 12. It's a multiple of five. Yes, and so this is a multiple of five, and 12 is a multiple of four. Three and four. But five, here's how you do it. This is five times three. And what is 12 then? Four times three. So I see the times three in there. So that means that this x has to be three times three, which is nine. So it's taking a three, four, five, and multiplying it by three. Multiplying it by three. Next one is five times two. So it's five times two. And twelve times two. And twelve times two. So what would x have to be? Thirteen times two. Twenty-six. Done. On the test, those are the two I'm sticking with. Because those ones come up the most. Questions?